This camera probably doesn't need an introduction at this point. X100V. 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 The X100V. 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 100V. X100V. 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 It's pretty crazy how in the last couple of months, the X100V just started snowballing in price. I get it though. It's a combination of global material shortages and social media marketing that have really tipped the equilibrium of supply and demand. And that's where I'm conflicted, you know, because you see on one hand, I like the fact that more people outside of the Fujifilm community are now paying attention to this camera and Fujifilm as a brand in general. However, on the other hand, hype is difficult to deal with. And with the price being what it is now, the barrier of entry is so much higher. And that's worrying. I'm not generalizing here, but there will be a lot of people buying into the X100V because they were sold on a dream and that leads to lofty expectations. And when those expectations don't match the price they paid for it. So I decided to make one last video about this camera. I've owned the X100V since launch, coming close to three years now, and I'm about to share the good and the bad and the ugly about this camera. And more importantly, whether this camera is actually right for you based on the current price tag. I'm going to start off with a bit of context. At launch in 2020, the retail price for the X100V was 1,400 Australian. Let that simmer in your mind because everything I say pertains to what this camera is worth at that value. Let's start with the good. The aesthetics of the X100V has aged like fine wine. It really exudes that retro film camera cool. It makes you want to pick it up and go shoot. Speaking of shooting, if there's one word to describe the experience of using this camera, it would be non-intrusive. You've got the offset viewfinder and the silent mechanical leaf shutter. As long as you're right eye dominant, this position feels more natural for casual photography. And in combination with the leaf shutter, you won't need to worry about disturbing anybody and attracting unwanted attention. There's also the flip up LCD, which comes in handy when shooting from the chest down. So it doesn't matter whether you're doing some serious street photography around town or just kicking it at a social gathering. The X100V never gets in the way. It's there when you need it. It's not when you don't. It's simple as that. Okay, now let's talk about the bad. Well, it's not really bad. It's just very subjective. Film simulations. Don't get me wrong, I love film simulations as much as the next Fuji user, but the way I use film simulations now, compared to when I first started, has changed. I almost never use the JPEG straight out of camera anymore, unless it's for a quick social post. I treat film simulations as more of an aid for me to see the scene in a certain way. The way I see the world changes depending on the film simulation profile I use. For example, there are certain compositions I would shoot in a high contrast across profile that I wouldn't otherwise with something like a high contrast Velvia profile. Being able to look through the EVF and instantly get a feel of how the final image will look based on a certain profile, then fine tuning the raw in post to get something closer to what I want is the sort of workflow I've grown accustomed to. Speaking of EVFs, here's another hot take. The hybrid viewfinder isn't all that. The technology that goes into creating the hybrid viewfinder system is amazing. It's just that for me personally, I use one type of viewfinder 99% more than the other. The times I have used the optical viewfinder, I could probably count on two hands. While there may be certain situations where the optical viewfinder may come in handy, here's the issue I have with the X100V. It's trying to imitate something it's not. If you've never used a real rangefinder camera before, you probably won't know what I'm getting at. Suffice it to say, at closer distances, the digital frame overlay in the OVF is off. It becomes difficult to focus and overall the experience is just subpar. Feel free to voice your concerns in the comments section down below. I would love to hear your opinions on this. Yeah, I can't be the only one, right? Now let's address the ugly. I want to stress that this is my personal experience after three years of use. The AF mode selector. 
Now here on my X-T4, this comes in the form of a dial here on the bottom corner at the front of the body. It's very intuitive to access and switch between the three different modes. On the X100V though, I don't know if it's just mine, but it does take a little effort to get it to switch. And if you're trying to go for continuous AF, you need even more finesse. There have been times where I wanted to change modes on the fly to capture a moment, only to miss that moment because I was fumbling around too much. The other ugly is also related to missing the moment, but this is more relevant if you are someone like myself who tends to shoot often in a faster paced style. The shutter delay. If you are in any autofocus mode, the X100V will always try to acquire focus before activating the shutter. The time it takes from fully pressing the shutter button to the shutter activating depends on the distance the lens is currently focused to and the aperture value. So for example, if I've been shooting things at about five meters away and all of a sudden a subject comes in at half a meter and I'm at an aperture of f2, the time it takes for the X100V to refocus will be significantly longer than say, if I were just snapping away at subjects closer to that five meter mark. Now I need to add that there are settings in the X100V that you can tweak to reduce the shutter delay, but these workarounds have their own limitations and could cause you to miss more shots depending on the situation. The only way to make the shutter response quick and consistent on the X100V is to set it to manual focus mode and shoot at a set distance. But that brings out another ugly aspect of the X100V, and that is the lack of intuitive manual focus. There are no markers on the lens to tell you the focus range at certain distance and aperture. The focus ring has no hard stops, so you can't even judge where the near and infinity points are. The only way to see the focus distance is either via the back LCD or through the viewfinder via the digital focus distance scale. I got a little technical at the end and those who just want validation for purchasing the X100V have probably clicked off at this point, but it's really important to address these issues because I believe the process of taking a photo matters a lot when it comes to enjoyment and overall experience. Now for the price I bought my X100V for, a lot of the shortcomings of this camera can be overlooked because in that price bracket of $1,400, there's not a lot to compete with. However, with today's prices, the X100V sits in an awkward position where there are better options on the market that can do more for the same amount or even slightly cheaper. So the only irrational reason I can think of for anyone to buy the X100V right now is for the aesthetics. And you know, if vanity is just as important to you as making good photos, then hey, don't let me stop you. Just understand that there are objectively better options out there. And if you can afford to wait, there may possibly be something better for you coming soon. So in closing, this is the last time I talk about the X100V. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, don't forget to send some likes and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and until next time.